Verse 3 continues on showing us the supremacy of Christ and he. So this he here is referring to the Son. And the Son is the radiance of God's glory. We have studied this out several times from the scriptures, that when we think of God's glory, this isn't some nebulous, kind of fuzzy concept. When we think of God's glory, we are on good biblical ground to think of his characteristics, like God is patient. He's slow to anger. He abounds in loving kindness. He's merciful, gracious, just, holy, righteous, true. And God's glory is the radiating forth of himself. Well, we are told here that Jesus is the radiance of God's glory. Which is to say, Jesus radiates forth God's character. And the Son is, continuing on here, the exact representation of of God's nature. When you think of the nature of God's very being, we know from the scriptures things like this are true. God is eternal. He has no beginning or end. God is omnipotent, which is to say he is all-powerful. He's omniscient, which is to say he is all-knowing and he has all wisdom. He's sovereign over all things. Well, this is all true of Jesus. He is the exact representation of God's very nature. So he's the radiance of God's glory. He radiates forth God's character and characteristics, and he is the exact representation of God's very being. You might remember Jesus said to his disciples on one occasion, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And on another occasion, Jesus said that I and the Father are one. And so this emphasis on the Son radiating forth God's glory, and he's, he's the representation of God's very being, is to say Jesus is God through and through. Next we see here, continuing on into verse 3, that the Son upholds. What does he uphold? All things. All things by the word of his power. Now we see that Jesus is not just the creator of all things through the Son, God made the world, but he's not just the creator of all things, he is the sustainer of all things, he is the upholder of all things. So we could say this everything owes their initial existence to Jesus, and all things owe their continued existence to Jesus. He actively sustains everything. So, very practically speaking, you will take your next breath because Jesus declares it so. He is sustaining your life. The planets, for example, stay in their orbit because Jesus declares it so. He sustains all things by the word of his power. And, continuing on in verse 3, when he had made purification of sins. Let's just stop right there. So our sins have been purified. They have been washed clean by Jesus because he made purification of sins by his perfect, sinless, once-for-all-time sacrifice on the cross, shedding his blood, he made purification of sins. The author addresses this more in chapter 10. And we're told there in chapter 10, verse 11, that the human high priest stands. Go look at chapter 10, verse 11. The, the, the human high priest stands daily, offering the same sacrifice for sins over and over again. Now, why did the human high priest stand all day offering these sacrifices? Because the work was never done. There was always the next sacrifice to be made. But look at what Jesus did. After he made purification for sins, what did he do? 
he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Not only is this a picture of of Jesus' preeminence, reigning over all things, sitting at the right hand of the majesty on high, it is a picture of completion, that the work of purification is done. Jesus sat down because the purification work was completed. It was finished. No more sacrifice need ever be made. He sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. And then verse 4, having become as much better than the angels. And if you read on it, the author goes to great lengths to show how Jesus is superior to the angels. But we're told right here that Jesus, the Son, has inherited a more excellent name than they. It's at the name of Jesus that every knee will bow and tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's not at the name of Michael or Gabriel or any other angel. It's at the name of Jesus. And as we are told in Acts chapter 4, there is no other name given among men by which we must be saved. It's the name of Jesus. He has a name greater than the angels. So big picture in this opening section of the letter, the author intends to give his readers a clear picture of the supremacy of Jesus over everything. And for the purpose of showing, look, there can be no greater revelation coming than what we have in the Son, and Jesus is the culmination of all that God had promised through the prophets. So don't look back. Rather, as we are told in Hebrews 12, you look ahead. You keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and completer of your faith. And so, that's a good place to end it. Let's ask God to help us to do just that. God, would you grant us a clear vision of the supremacy of Christ in and through all things, And then enable us to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. And we trust that this will put everything else in its proper place and perspective and orbit around the sun. Our worries and fears and temptations and relationships and every other thing is seen rightly in Christ's light. And so help us to see him in his majesty and splendor even today. And we ask this in Jesus' great name, the name above all names. Amen.